Welcome to our Hearst Cycles webinar for the 14th of May 2018. My name is David Hickson and as always before we take a look at the markets I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. In today's webinar we're going to be taking a look at an update to our analysis of the S&P 500. I've received some great feedback from many of you. Uh, thank you so much for that. I believe that it has been uh, useful for us to focus on one analysis and to update it each month, as opposed to taking a look at different instruments each month. Um, I believe that there are quite a lot of lessons to be learned from um, updating a, a single analysis and uh, seeing how analysis anomalies are resolved and how we approach the whole process as a Hearst Cycles analyst. So we're going to pick up today with a quick reminder of the analysis that we were looking at in our previous webinar. Here is the workspace that we were looking at with the data up to the first week of April and I'm not going to go through everything but just a quick reminder of the uh, important points. First of all there were two possible analysis options that we were considering. The one analysis possibility had the 20-week cycle trough over here in the first week of February. And uh, as a result of the positioning of that cycle, we discussed the fact that the market was moving up to an 80-day cycle peak. And I pointed out the slightly displaced 80-day cycle circle there, but the nest of highs, which was centered uh, round about here um, in the week commencing the 16th of April and then of course we were expecting price to come down into this 80 day cycle trough which is a little sort of uh, leaning over to the left uh, but the nest of lows there was based around uh, you know very early May or the end of April. I also spent some time discussing this circle here for the 40 week cycle uh, that is what I call a displaced cycle over a nest of lows. Let me just clear those marks and you can see it a little more clearly. There we go. So we have an 80-day nest of lows here for the last week of April, beginning of May. And right up above it, this displaced 40-week cycle. So uh, as we discussed in the previous webinar, um, you know the, what that means is that we're expecting an 80-day cycle trough to form at the end of April, beginning of May, uh, with the possibility that it is a 40-week cycle trough. Now, how does this happen? Why is this circle floating here above our nest of lows? Does it indicate some kind of a problem? Um, not really. Uh, the reason why it happens is because the circle is positioned on the basis of the recent wavelength of each cycle and of course when it comes to a long cycle such as the 40 week cycle uh, you must realize that we calculate the recent wavelength on the basis of the recent troughs of that cycle that have been identified or peaks if you're looking at a peak analysis and the last trough of the 40 week cycle formed uh, in my opinion in August of 2017 I believe I'm correct in saying and so uh, you know, that was, uh, well, roughly 40 weeks ago, of course. So um, the calculation of that wavelength is fairly old. Uh, it's looking back quite a long time to work out the wavelength of that 40-week cycle. However, the shorter cycles, of course, are using more recent uh, data to calculate their average wavelength. So, for instance, the 40-day uh, the cycle over here, um, you know, had a trough as recently, according to this analysis, as the third week of March. And so uh, the data that's being used to calculate the shorter cycle wavelengths is more recent. Generally, therefore, because it is more recent, we tend to expect uh, expect that the shorter cycle wavelengths are a little more accurate to give us an indication of what's currently happening in the market. But uh, I have learnt that you should never ignore a displaced cycle circle and it is always worth noticing and uh, paying attention to. What it tells us is it tells us to expect an 80-day cycle trough here but it might also possibly be the 40-week cycle because of that floating circle and whiskers there. So this was one of the analyses that we looked at. And of course, we took a look at the uh, composite model line to work out 
uh, what we were expecting uh, to happen in terms of how price was expected to move. There is that composite model line, and uh, you can see the composite model line gave us the expectation that a peak which we know, of course, was the 80-day cycle peak, should form. We'll check that date in a moment. And then price was going to come down and form a trough over here, at which point price was going to move up again. Okay. Remember, of course, the composite model line is based upon the analysis that we have. And so it was expecting an 80-day cycle trough here. Uh, we'll get the date in a moment. And then the bounce uh, would have been a bounce out of an 80-day cycle trough. We know from using our advanced observational capacities, uh, that that was a circle of the 40-week cycle there. And so there was the possibility that it could have been a slightly more uh, prominent trough. So the exact date, according to the composite model line for that uh, peak, was the 14th of April. And the trough over here uh, was projected to form on the 3rd of May 2018. So bear in mind, this is what we were speaking about on the 9th of April. Uh, so uh, five weeks ago, and this is the projection that we were looking at for one of our analysis possibilities. The other analysis possibility that we looked at in the webinar in April was with a 20-week cycle trough positioned at the end of December 2017. I won't go into all of that detail. I will just simply discuss what expectations we had as a result of this analysis. Well, uh, the one expectation that we had, as you can see, is that the 80-day cycle trough uh, was now really overdue. Uh, you can see it's sort of leaning over there to the left. It was indicating the 80-day cycle trough was overdue. And uh, so therefore, there was a possibility that that 80-day cycle trough had already occurred, but the software is unable to position it. And uh, in terms of the peaks, we have exactly the same expectation. We have this 80-day cycle peak over here. And there we had the dis uh, not, not a displaced circle, but a, a staggered circle off to the left, indicating the possibility that the 80-day cycle peak might have occurred there. But the nest of highs was centered over here. And um, then, of course, we would have expected price to come down to this 40-week cycle trough over here, which is also leaning over to the left. So it's, it's giving us a big range of time for the 40-week cycle trough to occur. Um, here you can see the circle for the 40-week cycle trough is much in the same position as it was in the other analysis, because of course the two analyses only differ from the 20-week cycle and shorter. So the 40-week cycle has pretty much the same expectation of forming a trough here um, uh, around about the 7th or 8th of May, uh, if you want to be absolutely exact about it. The nest of lows is sort of staggered off to the right, indicating that the shorter cycles, according to this analysis, have been sort of gradually pushing and stretching longer. So that 40-week cycle trough uh, could have occurred any time from, uh, you know, the first, the beginning of May, basically, particularly if you look at this this whisker for the 40-week cycle. Um, uh, it could occur any time from uh, the beginning of May up to about the first week of June. That was the expectation that we were given uh, because of this analysis. Let's take a look again at the composite model line, which is a very useful tool to use for helping to visualize the implications of the analysis. And here you can see the composite model line in this analysis gave a similar expectation for the market to rise up to a peak over here on the 15th of April. And uh, then it was expected to drop down to a trough here um, in about the sort of second week of May. So uh, that was that expectation. Uh, a peak over here dropped down to a trough somewhere over here and then quite a strong move out of that trough because of course that would have been a trough of the of the 40 week cycle okay so we were looking at a, a move down and then a move up uh, let's move forward and i'm actually going to show you an interim chart instead of jumping ahead to today because five weeks have elapsed since we did this webinar in april and um as time passes of course we update our analysis uh, every single day with new data and the analysis changes and so forth and um, about 10 days ago um, a little under two weeks ago the markets reached a critical turning point in fact somebody commented on youtube that the marks were the markets were at a critical point a very important point and they were about to show their hand um, indeed that was true and um, 
So let's jump forward to take a look at this same analysis. Um, this is with data updated to, uh, let me check this date. I think this is the 3rd of May. That's right, we've got data up to the 3rd of May. Um, in fact, the uh, that's in incomplete data on the 3rd. I did this analysis uh, on the 3rd. And so um, the, the complete data is up to the 2nd of May. So again, we have the two analysis possibilities. The one is with the 20-week cycle trough uh, in February. And here you can see uh, the analysis has positioned the 80-day cycle trough here in early May. Uh, that, and in fact, the date of our previous webinar was, if I draw a vertical line, was here. We did that previous webinar on the 9th of April. And our expectation, you will remember, was for price to come up to form an 80-day cycle peak. And there it did, exactly that. Um, so it was no surprise to any of uh, our Houstonians. Uh, it formed an 80-day cycle peak, in my opinion, on the 18th of April 2018, uh, which is pretty much where that uh, nest of highs was centered, if you remember. And then the market was expected to move down, as it did into what was expected to be an 80-day cycle trough, you will remember, uh, with this floating circle for the 40-week cycle. Now, uh, the reason why I stored this analysis uh, as a matter of interest is because it, it was a very critical moment in the markets. And um, that critical moment uh, had to do with the fact that we had this 40-day cycle trough that was expected uh, to form uh, you know, really soon, and we had this 40-week circle floating there. It's uh, what I call a uh, I call it displaced cycle uh, above a nest of lows, and it's an important thing to to sort of bear in mind. And uh, so this was a fairly uh, critical moment. At this point, looking at this analysis, we would have expected. Uh, we w were expecting a 40-day cycle trough to form, okay? So we were looking for a bounce out of a 40-day cycle trough. But there was the possibility that it could be a 40-week cycle trough. Now, um, if you find that disconcerting, then um, uh, you shouldn't. Um, her cycles analysis is, is is all about a likelihood and probability. Um, it's very rare that we can be 100% certain, but we can develop a, a level of conviction about our analysis. And uh, so we knew there was definitely a 40-day cycle trough occurring, and it could have been a 40-week cycle trough. And uh, the way in which you handle that would depend on your training, your trading style. Uh, my personal approach is that a 40-day cycle trough is good enough for me. I, I will enter a long trade on the basis of that. Um, if there's the possibility that it might be a 40-week cycle trough, then all the better. Uh, I'll, I'll enter it with uh, even more enthusiasm. Uh, so if we take a look at the composite model line at, at this point on this particular analysis, um, you can see that it is not looking uh, very impressive at all. Uh, it's showing that the market is, is, is going to come down to the 40-day cycle trough, hardly move, and then it's going to come down to the 40-week cycle trough. But you must remember that the composite model line is based upon the analysis you're looking at. And as I've uh, spent uh, quite a long time already discussing, uh, we have a 40-week uh, circle there. We can't just ignore that. It's not just you know a mistake in the plotting of the graphics. Uh, we need to consider it. And uh, that's when the other analysis that we were considering suddenly became quite a lot more interesting. This is the other analysis with the 20-week cycle trough at the end of December. Exactly the same analysis that we were looking at in the April um, webinar, but it has been updated with new data. And you might remember we had a leaning over uh, nest of lows for the 80-day cycle trough. Well, the uh, software decided to position the 80-day cycle trough beneath that trough over there at the beginning of March. And I'm, I looked at it and I said, well, that doesn't look very good to me, but I'm going to just let this analysis, uh, you know, I'm going to see this analysis through because 
uh, it's a possible placement for that 80-day cycle trough. And in fact, it's a very reasonable placement for the 80-day cycle trough, given that I have told the software to position the 20-week cycle trough over here at the end of December. So it's a very possible, very reasonable placement for that 80-day cycle trough, in which case this becomes the 40-day cycle trough at the beginning of April. Now, uh, I want to point something else out about this analysis, and that is the regularity of these cycles. Can you see how perfectly regular they are? Um, you know, they're, they're really um, excellently regular. When you see very regular cycles like that, I always sit up and take notice because it's looking quite good. That's what cycles should be doing after all. It's, it's creating perfectly regular cycles there at the foot of your chart. So um, all of a sudden this analysis that had not been my favorite analysis for some time, all of a sudden it, it sort of stepped up and it became a lot more interesting. And in particular, look at this nest of lows. Uh, that you know that nest of lows is 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 so narrow. It's giving a range of 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 only a few days, um, you know, a week maybe, uh, for the formation of the forty week cycle. That is why all of a sudden my ears pricked up, and I thought, okay, this is really a very interesting. Uh, uh, time in the markets because we are expecting a 40-day cycle trough to form according to the other analysis but it might be a 40-week cycle trough and if we look at this analysis and let me uh, just zoom in uh, if we look at this analysis we've got this nest of lows um, over here and uh, uh, you know it's looking really possible that this might be a 40-week cycle trough forming so when this kind of thing happens in the markets um, it's really important to ke keep an open mind and say, okay, it's possible. There are some anomalies in this analysis, some things we could discuss, um, but it is possible that a 40-week cycle trough is uh, going to form in the markets. Uh, it might only be a 40-day cycle trough, um, but let's have a look at what the composite model line on this analysis says. So the composite model line on this analysis was saying the market is coming down now to form a 40-week cycle trough, which is expected, um, you know, in, within this period of time, the composite model line low point was on the 8th of uh, May, I believe, 8th or 9th of May. And then, of course, the market's going to come up, and it's going to come up to this 20-week cycle peak at the end of June. So the possibility that this was going to happen was an important one, uh, you know, a really important one to bear in mind and to consider. So how would we have dealt with that? I have been asked by some people, it's all very well talking about this analysis end endlessly. How, how are you going to trade any of it? And uh, so the answer to that um, uh, is you can trade it in many, many different ways, of course. Uh, but one of the ways in which you can trade it is by looking at the interaction um, between price and the FLD. And in particular, you probably know I really like the 20-day FLD. And so here is the 20-day FLD, and um, the idea is that when price comes up, and let me just move these counts out of the way, when price comes up and uh, crosses that 20-day FLD, um, you know that would be your signal for a for an entry into the market on the basis that price is bouncing out of the 40-week cycle trough. And if we look at our other analysis, our FLD is positioned in a slightly different position. And the reason for that is because, of course, the analysis is different. So you would probably want to choose the analysis that gave you slightly more leeway, um, which is this analysis over here. And um, so. Uh, when price bounces up above the 20-day FLD, when it crosses that, that would provide us with a potential entry point. And as a matter of interest, I took a quick screenshot of our her signal system and what it said was the trading opportunity uh, for the next day. Uh, so this is sort of, um, uh, you know, one day after that. And here it is. Uh, I hope you can uh, see that. Uh, basically what the soft what the uh, her signal system is is doing is it's identifying a trading opportunity uh, in this case it's an a category long trading opportunity to enter at the level of the 20 day FLD for the next bar on the 4th of May which was a level of 2674 and so uh, if we just switch back to the chart quickly um, oops bearing in mind that of course 
this chart doesn't have um, the full data for the 3rd of, of May, as I've mentioned. I did this analysis during the day on the 3rd. Um, so it was looking at an entry on the 4th at the level of that uh, FLD over there. So uh, that was the situation at the at the critical moment, which, as I've mentioned, was about um, a little under two weeks ago. Uh, at that point, let's now move forward to today and see what has happened and uh, start speaking about what we are expecting to happen next. So here we are. This is data updated until uh, last Friday. Uh, the uh, What date would that have been? The 12th of May. And... Uh, as you can see, a trough did form uh, on that 3rd of May. Um, of course, price came down a lot uh, lot lower than the data we saw in the previous chart because I had done that analysis uh, earlier in the day. And it came down and formed the expected trough. So I say the expected trough because we were expecting a trough of the 40-day cycle. Uh, here is that circle of the 40-week cycle still lingering about. Okay, this is the kind of thing that you will often see in your analyses, and uh, it's it's an important uh, thing to note because uh, just a, a, a reminder of what that circle means: the wavelength of the forty-week cycle, as calculated uh, before August of two thousand and seventeen, indicated that we were expecting a forty-week cycle trough to occur at this point over here. All right. When a uh, fairly prominent trough forms uh, just uh, less than a week before that point, you know you really need to sit up and take notice, okay? Um, because there is, of course, the strong possibility that that might be the forty-week cycle. As a matter of interest, let's just quickly spend a moment discussing uh, the possibility of that being the forty-week cycle, because this trough formed. Okay, the software has confirmed that's a trough of the 40-day cycle. So, um, you know, it might just be a 40-day cycle. Well, if it is a 40-day cycle, then it's going to bounce up and it's going to hit this 20-day cycle peak, which it will probably hardly even notice. And then it will come up to the 40-day cycle peak because of the way in which markets move. Um, they will uh, describe zigzag movements, as I have mentioned before, and they will go up to the 20-day peak, down to the 20-day trough, up to the 40-day cycle peak. So we'll get a kind of a zigzag movement up to this 40-day cycle uh, uh, peak over here. But then, of course, we're still expecting the market to come down and form this big 40-week cycle trough over here. So surely it's going to have to you know, come down kind of hard. So... It is possible that the trough that we saw occurring on the 3rd of May was only a trough of the 40-day cycle. Uh, but in my opinion, it's more likely that it was a trough of the 40-week cycle, which was occurring only five days early, uh, according to when we were expecting it, based on our projection from August of last year. And it's it's those kinds of sort of extraordinary projections that um, that I really enjoy when working with Hearst cycles when you, you see that kind of thing unfolding. But let's speak about the possibility of the 40-week cycle forming here. And um, I received a, an interesting email last week about, uh, you know, how often are cycle troughs displaced from price troughs? In my opinion... Uh, because we're always plotting the the diamonds beneath you know beneath the troughs in price in my opinion i tend to generally disregard the concept that a cycle trough occurs uh, separately from the price trough of course we know that that is what happens the cycle forms a trough and price will form a trough nearby but because in our analysis process, we're plotting these diamonds. We're using price troughs. So I tend to stick with price troughs. And I don't get involved in discussions about whether the actual cycle trough occurred before or afterwards. But one situation in which I have noticed an important price, an important cycle trough will often occur at a place that seems not to be an important price trough is when a triangle develops in the market. And let's just zoom back a little bit and take a look at uh, what has been happening recently in the market and let me just hide the um well let me just uh, hide the peak analysis there we go and bring this down and discuss this price action 
okay, this is not a very sort of accurate line, but I think it doesn't take a lot of imagination to see a triangle formation, or some people would call it um, price working towards an apex. It's effectively a triangle formation in the markets. Now, in my experience, when a triangle forms in the markets, it is not the most prominent trough in the triangle, which is, of course, the lowest trough, which is, of course, the first trough. It's not the most prominent trough that is the actual, you know, big cycle trough. It is the last trough. So whenever you see a triangle formation happening and you are expecting a fairly big cycle trough, the chances are very high, in my opinion, that that big cycle trough will form at this less significant seeming price trough. Do you see why it's less significant? Um, uh, this trough in February is, is much lower and much deeper than it. It had a much bigger price move down into it. This next trough at the beginning of April is also more significant. It had a bigger move down in. Okay, And this final uh, trough in the triangle formation um, was much less significant. But in my experience, that final trough in a triangle formation is often the trough of the bigger cycle. So, in other words, um, although we were considering this as a trough of the 20-week cycle, um, I believe uh, the bigger trough should have occurred here. And, of course, the trough we were expecting at that point was a 40-week cycle trough. So um, that's an interesting little uh, sort of aside about the probability of that trough being a 40-week cycle trough. Sentient Trader uh, will continue to identify this trough uh, that occurred at the beginning of May as a 40-week cycle trough because in its analysis it was looking for a four, uh, no, big part, not a 40-week cycle trough, a 40-day cycle trough because in its analysis it was looking for a 40-day cycle trough and it's got this nice little analysis that's working very well and that's a 40-day trough and it doesn't want to think yet that it might be a 40-week cycle trough. I say it doesn't want to think yet that it might be a 40-week cycle trough but the reason it doesn't want to do that is because I have pinned this 20-week cycle trough over here. So uh, let's take a look at our other analysis, which had the 20-week cycle trough at the end of November, and see how that analysis has up updated. Not end of November, I beg your pardon, end of 2017. So here is that analysis. Now you will remember when we previously looked at this analysis, we had this fantastic, very accurate nest of lows over here at the beginning of April. Let me zoom in a bit. Um, we had that beautiful nest of lows uh, right here at the beginning of April and that nest of lows has disappeared and uh, Sentient Trader has positioned the 40-day cycle trough there. Why has it done that? Well, because it is measuring what I call the, the strength of that trough. And the strength of that trough doesn't seem to be stronger than this trough, and it doesn't seem to be stronger than this trough. So therefore, it's saying, okay, hang on, let me just reassess things here. I think that is actually only a 40-day cycle trough. The important thing when you're working with a whole cycles analysis is not the diamonds that are plotted in your chart, but it's those circles and whiskers, and it's the expectation that you have when the, the price goes into a trough. It's that expectation that you're trading on the basis of. You do not wait for the diamonds to be placed. It's a very important thing. So the fact that Sentient Trader has positioned that 40-day cycle trough there is very understandable if you're the kind of person that believes you, you, know, you should understand what software does. Um, it's understandable that that has positioned a 40-day cycle trough there. And, of course, that might be a 40-day cycle trough. But I was... Uh, you know, thinking it's very possible, probably likely, that a 40-week cycle trough has formed there. So uh, what I did was I created another chart in Sentient Trader, and I uh, said to Sentient Trader, okay, I, w I believe that is a trough of the 40-week cycle, and I pinned that 40-week cycle trough there. This is the answer that Sentient Trader came back with. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit. Uh, having pinned the 40-week cycle trough there, Sentient Trader refused to actually place it there. Uh, it's an interesting side note. Why did Sentient Trader refuse to place the pinned trough there? Because Sentient Trader, when it's doing a trough analysis, works with information about low points in the price. 
And since that 40-week cycle trough, it hasn't found very much information. It's, it's only been able to find that little tiny little trough there, which is possibly a five-day cycle trough. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of information. So instead of positioning the diamond there, it, it um, favors that analysis, and it makes that analysis possible by shuffling the other cycle troughs around. And if you look at the position of these other cycle troughs, you will see they were the analysis that we were looking at on the 3rd of May. Okay, those are the exact positions of the analysis we were looking at on the 3rd of May. So um, it, it repositions those troughs there. And I haven't had to do any, any other pinning there in the troughs. You can see none of those cycle troughs are pinned at all. Uh, and um, even if I, you know, even if I zoom out, um, let me, as a matter of interest, uh, just take a moment. Uh, you'll see there are absolutely no no pins in the troughs here at at all. So uh, when you don't have to pin an analysis, I always think, um, uh, you know, that's a sign that uh, the analysis is really strong. Because um, much as I like to believe I'm a I'm a talented her cycles analyst, I've learned that um, you know sentient trader can often do better than me. And um, so when I don't have to pin troughs here. Um, I feel, you know, really inclined to think that this uh, is a really good, accurate analysis. As a matter of interest, I've had to pin the 18-month cycle trough over here at the end of January, but that's a discussion for for a separate time in terms of uh, what's happening with those peaks. Um, so, uh, anyway, the the bottom line is that that I believe that this is a really valid possibility for what is happening. And that as soon as enough time has passed to allow sentient trader to position the 40-week cycle trough, it will do so. So let's start talking about what we're going to expect to happen next uh, and you know what the current situation really is. Um, in my opinion, I think it's very likely that the 40-week cycle trough has formed in the markets and that it formed on the 3rd of May. But we need to keep our minds open to the possibility that there was only the 40-day cycle trough. I hope that you were well, well positioned to trade on the basis of that trough um, because of all of our discussions and you were knowing to e expect a 40-day cycle trough that might turn out to be a 40-week cycle uh, trough. Uh, here you can see our displaced cycles on this analysis. Um, we now have two of them, the 40-week and the 20-week. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you've got a double displaced cycle. Um, you've got a 40-day cycle trough forming there. The chances are very high that that was a 40-week cycle trough. Um, but uh, we had that expectation, so hopefully we took advantage of it. Let's now take a look at what we're expecting to happen next. First of all, uh, well, let's, let's just display the composite model line. Ah, oh, wow, that's disappointing, isn't it? <laughs> you were you were expecting the composite model line to show you, you know, the market moving up because this is so obviously a trough of the 40-week cycle. The composite model line, I must remind you yet again, is based upon the analysis that you have on the chart in front of you. Okay, so this analysis is telling us that this was a 40-day cycle trough. So that composite model line is telling us that on the basis that this was a 40-day cycle trough, this is what we would have expected to happen. We would have expected we would have expected price to come up a little bit, form a peak round about here. And indeed price has come up and it has formed a peak, but it's formed a big part, it hasn't formed a peak yet. It has come up and um uh, it's come up a lot more than we expected. Then according to this analysis, price must come down to form this forty week cycle trough. Now, how confident are we in this 40-week cycle trough? We're not confident at all. That's a very displaced, very staggered nest of lows. Here are the 80-day and all shorter cycles. Here are the 40-week and 20-week cycles. It's a horrible picture. It, uh, you know, it's not a picture that I'm happy with at all. So, I I won't disregard this entirely because it's possible that the big strong move that we witnessed um, over the last 10 days you know, was fueled by lots of emotion and so forth. So it is possible that the market will form a 40, a 20 day cycle peak over here, um, much higher than expected, and then it will turn down. If that happens, then of course, I'll, I will uh, remember this analysis and I'll come back to it. So we need to be on our toes a little bit, uh, just in case that does happen. 
but in my opinion, uh, it's unlikely. Now, this divergence between what has happened in price recently, with the price going up so strongly, and what was expected in the composite model line, some people say, well, that means there's a there's an error in you know in the generation of the composite model line. It isn't an error in the generation of the composite model line. It is an indication that this analysis does not suit what has actually been happening in the market. And that's the uh, one of the very important powers of the composite model line. It allows you to assess the analysis that you have performed. When price deviates from the composite model line, it tells you that perhaps there's something not quite right about this analysis. Okay, so let's take a look at our other analysis possibility with the 20-week uh, cycle trough here in February and let's display our composite model line there. Let's see what happens. Wow, that is even worse, okay? Uh, that composite model line was telling us to expect a trough over here on the 3rd of May. All right, lovely. And then it said price is going to move up a little bit before forming a peak and then coming down. Okay, again, we've got a big divergence between price and the composite model line. To me, that implies that, in fact, there's something wrong with this analysis. What could be wrong? Well, it's obvious what is wrong. We've got this big 40-week cycle circle floating around over here. So what is wrong, in my opinion, is that that 40-week cycle trough has probably formed. But again, I keep this analysis alive. I don't destroy it. I will keep looking at it and keep checking it. Um, and if price does perform a sudden dramatic reversal and start plunging to lower levels, then I'll say, oh, well, that w that was the correct analysis, and we just had a lot of emotional involvement uh, in that um, you know, first 10 days of June. But, uh, uh, not June, May, um, but in my opinion, uh, as I've mentioned, you know, this is the most likely analysis with the 40-week cycle trough forming over here. Let's take a look at our composite model line for this analysis. And now here, you can see that what price has done matches much more closely what the composite model line itself has done. So when price matches the composite model line more closely, it tells us that the analysis is probably better. It's not a guarantee, but it, it is probably better. So our composite model line is suggesting that the 40-week cycle trough formed over there. We have a 20-day cycle peak in all of these analyses, which is expected quite soon. According to this analysis, that peak is going to cause a little bit of a, a little bit of a flat line until price finds its 20-day cycle trough over here, and then the rise is going to continue, and the market is going to keep rising right up until the end of June, roughly, when our 20-week cycle peak, our next 20-week cycle peak, is expected. So uh, let's just zoom out on this chart. And let's see how far back must I go. If we zoom out on this chart, let's look at the slightly longer term implications of this. And in fact, let me just zoom out all uh, even further. There we go. Okay, the longer term implications of this analysis. Um, ever since the uh, webinar in November last year, when I mentioned uh, the impending or approaching 18 month cycle peak that I expected to form in the markets, I suggested, and you, can go, you can go back and have a look at that webinar, I suggested that uh, price was going to pretty much come down until um, sort of early summer. I can't remember, uh, you know, when we were exactly expecting to that point. But then we would see a bounce, okay, into summer, and then the price would continue to come down into this 18-month um, cycle low, which uh, you can see is a bit sort of staggered there, but it's expected towards the end of this year or early in 2019. And so you can see this analysis, uh, which tells us that the 40-week trough uh, happened uh, about 10 days ago. Uh, this analysis is telling us exactly the same thing, um, you know, which is really encouraging because it means that the analysis that we were expecting uh, gosh, six months ago or more, six, seven months ago, that outlook is still uh, is still playing out. And price has indeed come down. It chose to do so in a triangle um, as opposed to, uh, you know, um, a more standard sort of a zigzag with a lower trough forming here. But the important thing is that this analysis is telling us that if the 40-week cycle trough formed the beginning of May, 
we are expecting price to come up to this peak which is the 20 week cycle peak over here and uh, then we're going to get a peak and that's going to happen end of june or early july um, then it's going to come down wobble its way down and and form another lower point towards the end of the year so the same outlook that we've been looking at as a matter of interest why does this composite model line get so kind of wobbly for want of a better term uh, during this period of time over here the reason for that is because the peak analysis is not really very clear and that is often the case when you're analyzing a stock market because peaks are not synchronized and this analysis is being performed on the basis that they are synchronized. So you will often get a weaker peak analysis and a stronger trough analysis. And I mean, look at these nests of lows. They're ridiculously tight um, in this analysis. So you could literally sort of set your alarm for the troughs that we're going to be trading over the next um, over the next seven months. I wouldn't recommend it. The principle of variation will step in and and mess things around a little bit for us. But the point is that the trough analysis is much better, more accurate analysis than the peak analysis. And you can see you've got really messed up kind of staggered nests of highs here. And that's why uh, the exact timing of these peaks should not be taken too seriously. So um, uh, you know, don't set your calendars and go and lie on the beach and then come back in October and expect there to be a lower peak than there was in July. Um, that won't necessarily happen. We need to update our analysis, obviously, as we as we move forward through time. Uh, but the important point is that according to this analysis, we are uh, expecting a little bit of flatlining or downward movement, and then we're expecting a good strong move up until the end of June. Uh, now there's a, a well-known saying, sell in May and um, go away, or is, is that right? Something like that. Um, uh, uh, indicating that, um, you know, you sell everything in May. Um, so uh, seasonally, what that implies is, is that seasonally, uh, you know, we would expect um, to, to sell now and go away. I, I think that, that's what that saying means. Um, uh, anyway, this uh, analysis would seem to indicate the opposite. Uh, don't sell just yet because it looks as if though this market is going up. Okay, so uh, that updates our analysis. This is my new preferred analysis in terms of what is happening with the 40-week cycle trough having occurred. But I'm not, uh, you know, closing these charts just yet, just in case this did turn out to only be a 40-day cycle trough. It's very important as a her cycles analyst and trader to keep your mind open to the possibilities. Uh, there's one final point that I'd like to make about um this uh, whole discussion about the trough that formed on the 3rd of may which is uh, not really anything to do with hearst cycles in some ways uh, i'd like to point out something that is uh, very valuable i believe which is the combination of hearst cycles with other approaches to technical analysis and understanding of the market and take a look at this bar this daily bar that formed on the 3rd of may um it has a very tiny body uh, these are candlestick bars, of course. It has a very tiny body, that little green uh, uh, section there. And it has a very large shadow, which is the gray bar over there. And um, some people call this um, a key reversal day, I believe. Um, others call it a pin bar. Um, I quite like the term pin bar because that's what it is. It looks like a pin. When a pin bar forms at a time that you are expecting a really big trough, or any trough, I mean, you know, big in terms of your, your trading time frame, um, it really is time to sit up and pay attention. And um, uh, a, a really simple approach to trading host cycles that I know uh, some people trade very successfully is they watch for um, pin bars, not only pin bars, but other forms of fairly classical technical analysis or candlestick patterns. They watch for candlestick patterns that form um, when they are expecting big troughs and they simply enter their trade at the open of the next day. Speaking about different approaches to uh, trading, um, I've mentioned David Weiss, I hope that's how you pronounce his name, um, from the website Weiss on Wickoff. Is it Weiss on Wickoff or Weiss on Wickoff? I'm not sure. Um, but uh, he speaks about a thing called a, a spring, uh, which is where the market forms a low point such as it did here um, in the third week of April. And then it drops below that low point, bounces back up again, 
and um, uh, that's what he calls a spring, and he includes a consideration of volume in in his consideration. Um, but it, it's a it's a really good opportunity. It's a low risk entry opportunity to get into a trade, and I found the combination of that concept with Hearst Cycles to be a really powerful one. In fact, I've um, had email correspondence with David Weiss about it, and. Um, uh, uh, you know, we're in agreement that the combination of her cycles and and his Wickoff approach is is really powerful. So it's something to to pay attention to and uh, look out for. So I do hope that you found this informative and that you are better prepared for what is coming next in the markets. On that note, let me see if we have any questions from Ilya. The question was. Uh, they were expecting uh, SPX 2500 by May the 7th. It didn't work. Are we going to see a drop in SPX in the coming week? Um, Ilya, I hope that the, uh, the discussion that we've had so far in the webinar has kind of answered that question. Um, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, you know, we were expecting the market to come down deeper to form a 40-week cycle trough, if that was what it was. Um uh, because of the sort of triangular formation of price, I believe uh, for that reason price didn't come down quite as low as um, as might have been uh, expected. Um, the important thing when you're working with her cycles is that you have a concept of when uh, turns are about to happen. Uh, price becomes uh, very important. Uh, not price, a bigger time, a bigger pardon, time becomes very important. Uh, price to some extent a little less important. Uh, of course the two work together and using Hearst cycles you can also generate price targets but the important thing to focus on is the concept of time and when a trough forms at an expected time uh, that's the time to act um, even though price has not actually achieved the target but I hope that I did manage to answer, um, answer that question. Uh, during the presentation. Uh, then we have a question here. Look at the Feb 5th low versus the January 29th low. Okay, so let me just see if I can if I can display that. All right, so, so th this question has to do with the fact that the 40-day low has been positioned here on the January the 29th, I guess, okay, under this little low here. And then price dropped down in this dramatic move and formed a, a trough here, of course, on the 5th of February, which, according to this phasing, is a lesser magnitude trough. Okay, uh, so that's what that question is, or that comment. Is it saying, how is that possible? Um, it's a feature of Hearst Cycles Analysis. When you're performing Hearst Cycles Analysis, Hearst him said, himself said that an analysis is more of an art than a science. And uh, when you're performing an analysis, you will find this kind of thing happening, uh, where you, you have a you know you have a really prominent trough in terms of price um, on the fifth of February, which just you know isn't acknowledged in the analysis. Is that possible? Does this invalidate the analysis? In my opinion, it doesn't. But that's my opinion, and there are analysts, I'm sure, who will disagree. The reason why I think that this does not invalidate this analysis is because markets move because of the influence of cycles, of course. Um, uh, but there are times in a market's movement when emotion takes over and people begin to panic or they begin to you know, get overly optimistic. But there are times when emotion takes over and uh, it distorts the price action. So most of the time we're seeing nice regular cyclical price action, but sometimes you get really strong moves because um, th there's been a bit of a turning point and uh, you get a lot of emotion and so the price moves get distorted. So that's my um, you know, consideration when looking at this. So price came down very hard on the Friday. It came down very hard on the Monday. And then it dropped a little bit, uh, a little bit further on the on the Tuesday. But then it started recovering, um, and I believe that was just a you know a sudden very emotional reaction to the fact that the markets were turning. And uh, so I am uh, often a little hesitant to place very big cycle troughs after uh, such a brief and very emotional price move. 
Uh, I hope that makes sense. So uh, in my opinion, that doesn't invalidate this analysis, but indeed, of course, it is something to consider when you are, um, you know, when you are uh, considering your analysis um, and deciding which is the uh, which is the favoured one. Okay, um, uh, let's uh, let's keep moving forward through these questions, and I see several other questions coming in, so I'm going to go back and um, uh, refer to those. Uh, this is not so much a question as a comment. Um, uh, about the zigzag being an ABCD harmonic. And I thought I'd just highlight it because, yes, I speak about zigzags, or what I call zigzags, or Hurst validated zigzags in the market. But very often, of course, a zigzag is uh, what is uh, more traditionally recognized as a harmonic pattern. Um, uh, for the moment, I cannot remember the person who defined harmonic patterns originally. Scott, was it? Uh, at any rate, um, harmonic patterns work very much hand in glove with with Hurst cycles analysis, and you will often find those zigzags are indeed um, harmonic patterns. Uh, then we had a question from Dale: Could the trough on May the third be an 80-day low cycle trough from the February the sixth? Uh, cycle low and uh, the answer Dale is uh, yes indeed <laughs> you know um, it certainly uh, it certainly could be if we if we take another look at at um, this analysis um, so you're saying in fact let me uh, just display um, the uh, the other analysis which has the 20 week cycle there we go okay uh, so I think this is um, a little more uh, appropriate to, to deal with this question so you're saying um, I, I, I think you're saying uh, could this be the 80 day cycle low following this uh, 20 week uh, cycle uh, trough yes indeed it could and um, I think if you measure that I think that's a total of 86 days now 86 days is a is a slightly uncomfortable number in terms of the nominal model that we work with considering that the average length of our 80-day cycle is uh, 68 and the average length of our 40-day cycle is 34. Um, oops, uh, that didn't seem to work. Okay, so you get 68 and 34, um, which if you add them together, you get you get 102. Um, uh, so, uh, yes, it is possible, Dale. And certainly, you know, the back of our mind, according to this analysis, we were expecting a 40-day cycle trough with the possibility of it being a 40-week cycle trough. But as you say, it could also be an 80-day cycle trough, but a very stretched 80-day cycle trough. And um, if you play around with your analyses in Sentient Trader, I think you will find that it's, it's quite hard to find, um, you, you know, to find a good analysis that matches that solution. But yes, indeed, it is certainly a possible solution. Um, and, uh, you know, who, who knows, uh, we, we might find in the future that uh, we'll come back to that and we'll say, well, that turned out to be an 80-day cycle trough. The important thing for now is that we know it was at least 40 days, uh, possibly up to 40 weeks. Um, anything in, be in between is, is uh, certainly um, possible. Uh, uh, quickly, I saw uh, uh, this comment from Vitaly. Um, can we see uh, Bitcoin today? Um, not today, unfortunately, Vitaly. Um, I've been struggling with some technical challenges in terms of broadcasting these webinars, and um, I'm going to put up a question about that in a moment. Uh, but the technical challenges means that it's uh, very difficult for me to to pull up an analysis and share it live without audio dropping out and uh, video disappearing and all kinds of problems. So I'm sorry about that, but um, uh, certainly a Bitcoin bears looking at because it's showing some nice, very clean cycles at the moment. Uh, this uh, comment came up at some point um, that you can't use Sentient Trader software as a trigger for position entry, exit, or reversal. You need the software and knowledge to anticipate turning points prior to the diamonds being plotted. Um, that is absolutely well the second part of that is absolutely true um, you, you you cannot just use the software which is why we put so much energy and effort into education um, you know we sell the software but we also uh, put a lot of energy into into teaching people the knowledge because without the knowledge you cannot possibly make um, a consistently successful trading decisions sentient trader software is not 
automated black box software that you that you set up on your computer and you leave it running and it generates automated trading signals it simply will not work um so uh, uh, yes abs- absolutely you need the knowledge that's um that's really very very important um a- another comment about the february 25 peak the price movement um, went up and exceeded the common el- the composite model line um then price was slammed down very fast so um the comment here is that the composite model line is accurate but price is sometimes fooling the majority to be on the wrong side of the trade yes i mean that, that's a uh, that is indeed of um you know of a very uh, pertinent point um we don't have the composite model line unfortunately in these screenshots that i've grabbed so i can't show it to you right now but um the composite model line i can tell you sort of came down like that and um then did you know something like that um and uh, so the comment is the price came up really high over here um why did it do that um again i i would tend to say that when when markets make really big turning points there's a lot of emotion involved and uh so i would again use the emotional argument here and say that uh, you know price dropped really suddenly and really fast because of excess emotion and it bounced up again really fast probably because of excess emotion remember that the composite model line is telling us what the cycles tell us to expect it it includes the cycle wavelength and the amplitude so it tells us what the cycles are doing to influence price um, when price differs from the composite model line it either means that something else is influencing that price movement such as very strong emotion or it tells us that our cycle analysis is wrong okay um a, a, a quick comment about a triangle being a, a coil compressing price range exploding with force once it breaks out near the apex it's a, an important comment to make when i um, mentioned the fact that a triangle has been developing um i meant that the um uh, you know the general structure of the price movement has been fairly triangular whether the triangle that formed uh, fulfills all the requirements to be a a correctly labeled a traditional classical analysis triangle um i'm not commenting about um but certainly there was a, a triangular kind of a, a formation there and the the sell in may is a very old wives tell yes it's an important point but i thought it was an interesting comment to make considering that we are now in may and pat um helpfully pointed out that the pin bar that i was um uh, speaking about it's correctly called a hammer in candlestick terms which is bullish if it is confirmed um the next day um variables brought up a very interesting and useful point about price hitting the fld and in fact i i realized having recorded the content for today's webinar that i hadn't mentioned price hitting the fld so um what i would like to do is just quickly show you price hitting the fld and here it is um i meant to uh, i meant to actually speak about this um but here is the 40 week fld now remember that when price crosses down below the 40 week fld that confirms that the previous peak is a peak of the 40 week fld well no big surprises there but when price crosses up above the 40 week fld which it did over there um where was that that was sort of sometime last week it crossed up above the 40 week fld then um theoretically that confirms that a 40 week price trough a uh, cycle trough has formed in price so that is confirmation that a 40 week cycle trough has formed in price um i should point out that you know these confirmations of price troughs because of the fld um need to be um you know considered carefully and there are often mitigating factors and so forth some people might argue that price didn't really drop enough below this 40 week fld but uh, the fact that price climbed up above the 40 week fld last week um it does mean that technically speaking the 40 week cycle trough has indeed formed in the markets so uh, thanks for bringing that up uh fairy balls and and reminding us to keep an eye on those flds um they uh, really are very important uh blair says what timing models was i using default of your model with the six year uh yes blair i 
in terms of this analysis, although you um, we didn't uh, speak about six-year peaks or, or troughs, I work with a nominal model that I like to use when looking at um, stock markets, which has um, the, uh, Hearst Standard Default Nominal Model, 18-month, 54-month, 9-year, uh, and 18-year. Uh, but I sneak a six-year cycle in there between the 54-month and the... Uh, nine uh, between the 54 month and the nine year cycles I sneak a six year cycle in it has a, um, an, a, a complex harmonic ratio with the nine year and the 54 month cycles it's a very useful model in my opinion and Blair says what components are included in the composite model line in the favorite analysis but the components the cycles were all cycles from 20 day up to nine year and also sigma L is included in that Blair. The Canadian saying, Don Bialu, buy when it snows, sell when it goes. So that's, that's another approach. Okay, um, Ilya says the trading volume of stocks was low last week. What does that mean? Well, Ilya, I am by no means an expert of, um, you know, working with uh, volume and, and all that kind of um, thing in terms of volume combining with price action so I'm really the wrong person unfortunately to answer that um, generally speaking um, as you mentioned in your next comment bulls with low volumes have no confidence in the market uh, yes indeed perhaps that is what is happening perhaps there is no confidence in the market um, Mahendra says you are using candlestick charts but you can try Haiken is it Haiken Ashi chart since it removes noise and shows clear up or down trend for small cycles yes um, the combination is really interesting it's kind of complicated um, working with it because the Haiken Ashi um, chart requires quite a lot of um, sort of additional understanding uh, but indeed that's a very useful uh, thing to look at as a, as a combination and Don mentions that the low volume spike last week might argue for the first composite model line analysis with lower lows still coming soon in his opinion uh, yes indeed uh, which is why I, I did show them uh, both and I, I, I think that makes a really good sort of point to end the webinar on um, it is still possible that last week's trough was only a 40-day cycle trough. We need to remain aware of that possibility and act accordingly. So if markets turn down in a kind of nasty, sharp way, then um, uh, you know, remember that last week might have only been a 40-day cycle trough, and you know that we're still expecting the 40-week cycle trough to occur. Uh, her cycles give you an expectation of when to expect turns in the market, and we watch price very carefully to see, uh, you know, how it behaves. When it behaves in the way that we expect, fantastic. When it behaves in a way that we don't expect or which highlights the possibility of a different analysis, we need to pay attention. In fact, I'm going to leave you with one final point, one final uh, comment, which is a question that I have for you. We have some technical challenges with putting on these webinars. The technical challenges have to do with the quality of my internet, where I live and work in rural Italy. And um, so given those technical challenges with the internet quality, I would like to know from you how I can make the live experience of these webinars as useful as possible. When we first started the live webinars, um, everything worked very smoothly and I could pull up charts and draw all over them and you know chat for a long time about them um, the technical challenges recently have made things really difficult uh, keeping the audio going and the video going and so forth so if you have any ideas for um, how I can make these live webinar experiences as useful as possible without constantly hitting technical problems then please uh, send us an email at uh, info at sentient trader and on that note, I am going to say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining me in today's webinar. I look forward to seeing you next month.